Class in session. We're going to start this week's episode by doing a little homework. Once you spend some time in crypto, one of the daily routines you fall into is checking the charts on a website like CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. Cast your eyes to the top left of the screen and look just how many cryptocurrencies are listed. Today, it's 6,667. And that is a lot of what this space loves to call shitcoins. And why do we need so many, you'll justifiably ask yourself, and with good reasons. It's one of the hardest hurdles to overcome when you arrive in blockchain, uncoupling yourself from the fiat model you've known your whole life and embracing a completely different model of transacting value. Because these currencies are all radically different one from another and can be used in a myriad of ways. Too many to list in one video, but here we're going to take a look at a handful of the ones gaining the most traction because Away from the gaudy headlines about yo-yoing market prices, blockchain is already quietly revolutionizing the worlds of finance and logistics, and it's not gonna stop there. Is it going to change the world? Good question, and it's answers to questions like those that keep us up at night. So grab yourself a plate of cookies and a lovely steaming mug of hot blocklet, because this is School of Block. Ah! In our last episode, we covered the nuts, bolts, blocks, and whistles of what a blockchain actually is. Quick recap, it's a digital record of all transaction ever made within a given system. Now that system might be Bitcoin, it might be Ethereum, or it might be a private proprietary chain made by a company like IBM. Yes, that IBM. Crypto isn't just for the weird and wacky tech nodes out there. There's real enterprise usage going on because it's a hugely versatile technology. Now, the blockchain might have been invented by the mystical Satoshi Nakamoto, but it has been gleefully adopted by large tech firms desperate to find a competitive advantage and offer unique solutions to their customers. And why? Well, it's not just that they see an opportunity to make money, although obviously they do. There's actually a plethora of real-world problems that blockchain can address in ways that simply weren't possible before. One of the biggest concerns of life in the 21st century has become a deep lack of transparency, something we've seen at every level of digital life across social media, government, and media in general. In the era of fake news, we're forced to start from a position that nothing can be trusted, and that is a big problem. But under blockchain conditions, trust is no longer required because it's trustless. Now, this idea is being adopted by the supply chain management industry to track everything from manufacturing to food production and healthcare. And you remember that whole sorry mess of voting in the 21st century? Well, that also looks set to be radically overhauled thanks to blockchain. Now, whether or not you believe that large scale fraud is possible, the manual voting process, whether in person or by mail, is time consuming, expensive, and subject to delays and inaccuracy. So anything that can help improve that has got to be a good thing, right? So one of the most profound ways to demonstrate this transparency issue is just to send a transaction. So what I'm going to do is send a very small amount of Ethereum to an address, which I also control. Uh, we'll do $23 or so. So I click confirm, and I go and look at activity, and it says pending. Now, if I click on this arrow here, I get more information about what's happening with the transaction. And then I can click on view on Etherscan, and it will show me some information. It will show me that the transaction is pending. It will show me that I'm in a queue and how far along in the queue I am. It will tell me where I'm sending and where I'm sending to. And it will tell me how long it reckons it will take for the transaction to be confirmed. Ah, there we go. So we, now we have the one block confirmation. So the number of blocks mined since that transaction. Normally what you have to wait for is about 21 blocks to be confirmed for the transaction to be finalized. But that's it. So we can see at any given moment in time where our transaction is, how far along in the confirmation process it is. And you try doing that with your bank. Like when something is sent from one bank account to another, you have no idea where it is. But with the blockchain, it's all here. And the transaction hash, which is here, is there forever. So we can look back at any block at any given moment in time on the Ethereum blockchain and see what happened in that block publicly. You, me, anybody, we can look at that. 
And that's profound. It gives you a, a range of forensic accounting and a range of forensic information over what's happening at any given moment on the Ethereum blockchain that anybody can access. And once you wrap your head around that, that is pretty amazing. Oh my God! Wow! Proving you own something indisputably from your identity to digital goods has become increasingly difficult in the digital age, but a blockchain is immutable. Once data is recorded, it cannot be rewritten after the fact. And this has huge implications for copyright, real estate, and our very identity itself. If who you are can be proven beyond a doubt, ah, oi, 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 oi. If who you are can be proven beyond a doubt, like this, then this becomes an incredible, powerful tool in digital life. I don't want to see you again. This is my chair. Now, one of the most powerful attributes of a public blockchain is that it's permissionless, meaning nobody can stop you using it. Now, this may not sound like a big deal to a Western, to a Western audience, accustomed as we are to being welcome mostly everywhere. You're not welcome. But the truth is, our financial system operates a highly privileged system of gates and doorways. You hear that? Privileged. You're not allowed in. Get out. A dollar is a dollar, right? Well, not if you're in Lesotho and you only have 10 of them. Never mind that those $10 represent a month's wages. An open financial system, one built on blockchain, doesn't give a monkeys who you are, how much you have, or where you are. If you own a wallet and can fund it, even a tiny amount, then you can go to a... I'm going to... Yeah, then you can go to work. So let's go to work. So there's no shortage of challenges out there facing us, and it might not have been immediately apparent with the emergence of Bitcoin in 2009 how blockchain could address all of these, because Bitcoin's first-generation protocol is really only concerned with value transfer. Very good at what it does, sure, but not all that flexible. But the emergence of second-generation blockchains complete with an applic... complete with an... Who wrote this? Complete with an application layer and smart contracts has begun to show us what the true potential of blockchain can be. The most dominant of these is, of course, <coughs> Ethereum. But there's no shortage of pretenders to ETH's crown. And these are just the permissionless or public blockchains. IBM are very keen to sell you one of their permissioned or private blockchains. Deloitte, a hot to trot for distributed ledger tech, and JP Morgan even launched their own coin. In 2021, blockchain is still considered edgy, but a quick glance through the websites of the biggest names in banking, management, and finance shows that it's not if, but when for mass adoption. A recent Gartner survey found that 14% of enterprise blockchain projects moved to the production phase in 2020, up from 5% in 2019. And that's a 280% increase, despite the hindrance of, you know, a global pandemic. So yeah. It's happening. Oh yes, it is happening. But let's say you're just Joe or Jane on the street now in your living room, which is more likely these days. What difference can blockchain make to you? Well, some of these applications are still in their infancy, but they are coming. Now imagine internet shopping in 1998. You could do it, sure. But it wasn't quite the Amazon one-click, buy whatever the duck you want experience we've got today. So let's take the big one that's hot on everyone's lips this year, DeFi. What is it? Complicated, unfortunately, but also amazing. Decentralized finance offers every Joe or Jane out there a completely democratic access to financial products. Do they want to invest their wealth and get paid interest? Monies? Do they want a loan? Give it, give it, give it. Well, if they've got collateral, yeah, yeah, no problem. No sniffy bank managers to say no because your hair is too long or you wear the wrong kind of glasses or your income is too unpredictable. Where's the money, Lebowski? Oh. Whether you live in Twickenham or Timbuktu, your access to financial products is the same. DeFi offers an opportunity to create a more equitable world economy, one that's more secure and transparent into the bargain. And next year, regulation coming to the DeFi sector will most likely open up the space to institutional players, making the range of offerings even greater.
Space, the final frontier. Real page turn of this one. One aspect of Joe and Jane's digital life that's got a bit messy over the last 10 or 15 years is their digital identity. They've got their Facebook profiles, Twitter feeds, Instagram posts, and maybe even a cobweb-encrusted MySpace page. But who owns the images, the data, the history connected with their digital lives? Well, it sure as hell isn't them, and it sure as hell isn't you. The integration isn't quite there yet, but make no mistake, quicker than you can say, Netscape Navigator Blockchain will be giving Joe and Jane control over their digital identities. And when Joe and Jane next come to buy or rent a house, there's a pretty good chance that the real estate business will be in transition, as smart contracts executed on blockchain revolutionize the way property is owned, rented, and changed between hands. And we're not forgetting, of course, the big, obvious fat one, payments and money. Want to transfer some money to your long-lost relative on the other side of the world, but extortionate wire transfer fees and exchange rates, meaning they only see $8 for every 10 you send. Well, cross-border payments are easy as pie with blockchain. More efficient, more secure, less friction. And it's fair to say that trillions of dollars in untapped value is waiting to be unlocked through financial empowerment across the world as developing countries finally find themselves on a level playing field. And blockchain's operational efficiency is just the icing on the cake. Things are moving pretty fast out there right now. And to quote our friend Ferris Bueller, if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. So here's the latest in the space. First up, COVID vaccines. Two UK hospitals are already trialing blockchain technology to keep tabs on the storage and supply of the incredibly temperature sensitive vaccines. And you guessed it, IBM now has a working system and is in talks with Moderna with the aim of launching a pilot project. And Rakuten's blockchain lab has just completed a proof of concept with Irish startup WIA to track companies' compliance with COVID-19 regulations using occupancy information from Internet of Things enabled devices in their buildings. On the payments side, Visa just announced that transactions can be settled using USD coin, USDC, which is a stable coin or crypto dollar powered by Ethereum. And that means I can use this very handsome crypto debit card to make payments directly in USDC without them needing to be converted into USD. And if you tune in next week, we'll be looking at what happens when you try to go completely decentralized just for 24 hours, mind. But boy, what a trip that turned out to be. You've been watching School of Block presented by Ledger and The Define. Demystifying decentralization one block at a time. Don't forget to subscribe, drop us a like if that's what you're into. And as always, here's to your financial freedom. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, oh, stop it, I said no! Come on!